and welcome to this edition of EMS Now Up Close. I am Eric Miskell with EMS Now, and my guest today is Armando Del Hoyo. He is the Mexico and Latin America Regional Sales Manager for Micronic. Micronic, of course, is the global supplier of high product precision, excuse me, production equipment. Um, I had the pleasure a few months ago of doing an interview with Mike Chronic with Clement Jargon, who's the senior vice president of the High Flex Group. And so part of that uh, interview, we spoke about what was happening in Mexico. And uh, so it seemed like just a natural uh, when I met Armando last month in Guadalajara that I invite him on and, and speaks directly to somebody who's in charge of kind of helping to grow the business down there. So Armando, thank you for joining me today and taking the time to, to share with our audience. Um, Hello, Eric, nice to see you again. <laughs> absolutely. I enjoyed our conversation in Guadalajara and uh, found you quite knowledgeable about the industry and things going on down there. So I look forward to this opportunity. Sure. Why, why don't we begin by just letting you kind of introduce yourself to our audience? Tell us about yourself, what's your background, and what's your role within Micronic? Sure. Well, I'm I'm always working in electronics. I have uh, you know being in the as a customer in different companies as Sanmina, where I started, then I moved to here in Guadalajara. Then I moved to a company in Tijuana called Marte Power at that time. Uh, then I start selling electronic components. Then uh, I also used to sell consumables, mm -hmm. uh, a company called EIS. I also was a rep for, uh, representing different electronic brands. Then the opportunity came with uh, BI Technology as a sales manager for Mexico. And then, as you probably know, my chronic acquired mm -hmm. BI and here I am. Now I am responsible for all Mexico and South America for all the sales for my chronic. Okay, good. Yeah, and that's what stuck out to me when I spoke to Clement was that um, you don't use, my chronic doesn't use rep firms down there. They use direct sales, which is what you're in charge of. No, we have uh, some reps. They are oh, not big groups. They are more local groups. Okay. Uh, but yes, here we use uh, reps in Mexico. Also in Brazil, we have a a good group group in, in Brazil in Argentina as well. So yes, we work with with reps. Oh, but, you do. Uh, okay. They are more local local reps. Uh, here in Mexico, we have hired just a new guy for for sales that is helping me. Okay. Uh, and that's how we are structured in regarding to to sales. Mm -hmm. Hey, other than the sales, and I'll ask a little about this later, but it seems relevant now. What about the service side? Do you have the service support team as well then? Yeah, that's that we handle on our own, Micronic. Right now we have eight engineers direct in Mexico. They are located in different cities uh, in the north of Mexico, in central Mexico, basically Guadalajara, Tijuana, Chihuahua, Juarez, Monterrey. So we all cover with eight uh, field service engineers here in Mexico direct from, from Micronic. So yeah. I believe that's a good point for us that we don't handle our support through other third party. Yeah. Customers sometimes prefer that a lot more. I think they do, yes. Um, so let's get into the business in Mexico. Tell me about the Micronic business in Mexico. Tell me kind of what the strategy is as you go to market down there. Well, I start with the company more, well, when BI was acquired almost five years ago. So when I took the whole responsibility, uh, honestly, we have a big push with the My Smart Line. It's where we have increased a lot of ourselves. We have an install base on AOI and SPI, but the growth lately is on, on the My Smart, all the conformal coding, all the dispensing. Mm -hmm. So we are putting almost all our energy on that without, of course, uh, uh, taking, uh, of course, the look on the other products. But uh, at the moment, but my smart line is is the one that is really growing out here in, here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we're putting a lot of effort here in Mexico. So that's leading us to start uh, an office here in Mexico so as a, with a demo room and all that stuff. And with all the engineers, with the team that we are created, have created now. So we're on the on a good path of growth here and, and 
the idea is to grow that more, even more, you know? Yeah. And the, my smart is, is like you said, that's that, that range of coding and dispensing solutions that you have. And is that mostly driven by the automotive sector then? Well, we serve all the, all the markets, uh, but mainly here in Mexico, there's a lot of automotive, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just for that. We are trying to serve all, all markets, uh, mm -hmm. medical, telecommunications, uh, we're working now with the big EMS companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, I say we also have towers. We have also pick and place. Yeah. We have the AOI, the SPI, Jet Printer. So Micronics is a full solution provider. And, and the idea is to, to offer everything. But for some reason, uh, the opportunity right now, the most of the opportunities is for the MySmart line. That makes sense. And so while you offer the full solution, clients can, you can find wherever the opportunity is and bring that in and then hopefully expand the business as a result. That's correct. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, and I was asked about this. And so do you do aeronautics as well down there? Is that, I knew that was a big one for. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. Uh, not that much. I would say automotive is, is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. and Industrial, medical, a little bit. It's it's a diverse, to be honest. Okay. But automotive is, is automotive is the is the biggest one. Yeah. So how do you think it's going? How's the reception by the the customers in Mexico? Well, it's good. It's going good. Really good. Uh, we're doing a step by step. You know, sometimes you need to be on ABL on some companies. We're working on that, but uh, we're increasing the business year by year. So even with the pandemic and all that. We increase our sales really, really good. Okay, and and that and like you just said too, you hired somebody else from Mexico. There, that's so correct. Okay. Uh, when we start uh, pushing a lot uh, here, my chronic in Mexico, we I start with just one engineer, and as I have just said, in three years we already have eight engineers mm -hmm. plus one more sales guy. So the, the team is growing, the business is growing. So the idea is to, to continue that path. Next step, as I mentioned, is probably get the, the office and demo room here in Mexico uh, to continue serving our current and future customers. Yeah, and the demo room, will that be the, to demonstrate, to have the full suite of Micronic uh, platform? Yeah, that's the idea, to have the full suite here in, in, in Mexico. Okay, and then would customers be able to come in not just to see it, would be, would you be able to run a line, or how would the how's that envisioned? Hey, exactly, they will be able to run the line to uh, do some tests, uh, see okay. the machines running, whatever they want, okay. train them, uh, whatever. That's the idea to have the the facility here in Mexico. And will that be in the Guadalajara area? Or? Yeah, yeah, we're looking for a space here in Guadalajara. Okay. Well, when I was down last month, it looked like everybody was looking for space yeah. in Guadalajara. <laughs> Every, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know why everybody's here, but well, you know why. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, it shows, it shows how robust the business is down there, right? And I yeah. think that's such such a great place for manufacturing globally. Um, I'm a big fan of the Guadalajara area. So, uh, and it was the energy when I was down there. You could just every conversation people are talking about how the business is growing. So it's clearly yeah. an exciting time to be in Guadalajara. So yeah, there's a lot of expectations also for Mexico because well, all the what is going on around the world. So there's a lot of business coming to Mexico. Probably has, it has uh, been, you know, exploded as, as we believe because one reason or the other, the shorter shortage of the components and all that. But I believe Mexico in two, three years will be really, really, uh, if not the biggest market, one of the biggest markets for electronics industry in the world. Right. Well, let's get into some of those issues because that was, uh, you know, the you know, Micronic is benefiting from some of that, or as you say, along with Mexico then. Um, and you're talking, some of that is the reshoring drive that's going on, right? The, the business right. that's coming for geopolitical, supply chain security, whatever you wish to call that. Um, how are you seeing that? What are you seeing in that regard? Yeah, the, the, it, what, you, what you just mentioned, yes, we're just you know, waiting for the right moment uh, to th that to happen. You know, I, it will happen. We expect sooner than later, uh, because the reasons you mentioned, geopolitical reasons, 
Yeah. But as soon as every everybody is kind of you know find this his place, uh, this will explode. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of customers uh, waiting for projects to to arrive, but mm -hmm. for some reason, some they're waiting for something. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it will it will come. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, that was one of the comments when I was down there last month. Several people mentioned they're waiting for you know. They're ready to build. They need that golden screw, right? That that's one correct. thing that's missing, right? Yeah, <laughs> Everything's waiting on that. So yeah, that's correct. But but it will happen. It will happen. Yeah. Now, do you see? Um, uh, and you mentioned having, you know, three years ago you began, and then you had one engineer. You now have the eight. How hard has it been sourcing uh, people down there, finding people to to do the work? Because it's quite competitive. Yeah, it's. I will say it's not hard, but mm. uh, you know I try to find the the best people for, of course, to help me with my chronic to be a very successful company. So I believe we really have hired really high qualified people. Uh, what I do is you know interview have four or five candidates, and we several people from our team from my chronic in the U.S. We interview mm. them, so we make sure. That's the right candidate for her company. Mm -hmm. And I will say it hasn't been that difficult. We have very good qualified engineer people in, in Mexico. We are. No, I, I knew that the talent base was there, but I also got the sense that the competition for the talent is very, very intense these days. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's intense. Everybody's looking for, for people. So yeah. you have to really. It's not that easy, but I will say it's not uh, you know that hard. You know, that's gotcha. A, that's yeah. a lot of good people. Yeah. Here in Mexico. That, tell me another thing that that I sense was going on in Mexico too was the the what's going to impact southern Mexico that there's some transition or talk of some some of the industry possibly and the, the, and people are talking like with the semiconductor things maybe moving down because of some people talk about kind of the water issues up in in more northern. Mexico, where it's less severe down in southern. Do you see that? What is your opinion on that? It's true, but I haven't heard any company that is moving southern to Mexico. Well, yeah. I mean, really sound southern. I haven't yeah. heard. It's more centralized now. Uh, yeah. You know, Jalisco, with Guadalajara, Guanajuato, Querétaro area is more central. Mm -hmm. uh, but southern and then I haven't done that. I haven't heard okay. uh, companies moving right now. But it could happen, you know, yeah. in the sort of southern of Mexico, there's a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, and that's it. And people said, especially around the semiconductor and some of the discussions of yeah. those industries moving, that that might be the, the more logical place to position that within the country. So time will tell, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, time will tell. But at the moment, I haven't heard. Yeah. No one moving over there. Right. Um, tell me then, too, what do you think of are the, are the you know, the current strengths for the industry in Mexico? Other, I mean, it's benefiting from growth for us from other reasons. Is it and it used to always be proximity to the United States market was the big one. That's a big one. Yeah. But Mexico also benefits from having a lot of experience in the industry for many decades and good universities and talent. So that's correct. That's correct. That's another. And as I was telling you, there's a lot of qualified people here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, universities with engineer, engineers, mm -hmm. uh, studies. So, so Mexico is a big country. It's a big country. Uh, <laughs> as you mentioned, yeah. the, the, we're beneficial of where the U.S. neighbors, right? Yeah. And of course, it's not that expensive as the U.S. That's exactly big, big, big advantage. Yeah, but yes, we have a lot of expertise for years. We have, especially mm -hmm. here, Guadalajara. It's called, if you know, the Silicon Valley of Mexico is Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. from the big guys and all the universities have engineering careers. So there's a lot of people going out of schools every year. Yeah, and no, they absolutely, go and, and work with the. With the big AMS, they start as practice, and then they get higher, and that's mm -hmm. when they they start. Yeah, you know, and so um, with with the success that Mexico is 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 realizing now again, and the growth and everything we've just been talking about, 
that obviously makes the everybody's moving there, right? I mean, you see even a lot of Asian companies putting, you know, putting facilities there. And so the competition, even for somebody like you in your position for selling the Micronics and what you're you're bringing to market there becomes more intense. How are how are those challenges when you go in? Yeah, well, we have a lot. The, the most of the companies are from the U.S. or Europe uh, companies. I will say then, uh, Asian companies, Japanese, Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, they are quite open. Japanese are quite open. Chinese are more closed. You know, they mm -hmm. most of them try to to buy from from their own country, but in general, the US, the European, even the Japanese accounts are pretty open to hear you, to serve you, to buy from you. Uh, so yeah. I will say it's not a big, big trend with the exception of uh, some ja Chinese companies yeah. and Koreans companies. Yeah. And, and Armand, let me, is the purchasing decision authority then, is that at the facilities in Mexico or since most of these companies are foreign owned, do they sometimes they have to go to the headquarters to get approval or is there a local authority for the material, for, uh, the equipment purchasing? We have both cases, you know, it depends uh, the company. Uh, in general, the Asian companies, they have to go to their corporates mm -hmm. to have a real approval. And so in some cases, as we tell you, they buy from, from there. But in general, the U.S. and European companies, they have their, they can decide locally. They have their own purchases here. Uh, of course, they have to, to probably receive some kind of approval from their corporate, but, yeah. uh, but uh, mainly they can decide here locally. Right. And so, and I guess what I'm at getting at there is that you, your sale is local then. You don't have That's to worry correct. about the, the yeah. corporate or be called upon to do present up north, so to speak. So That's correct. That's correct. Okay, good, good. So what do we have to look forward to in the next year or so for, for you there in Micronic in Mexico? Well, the next step for us is, you know, establish uh, our facility here in Mexico. That will be a big step for us bringing all the machines, mm -hmm. uh, having the space to run any any test, trainings, whatever. We hope that that also explode our sales here in Mexico. So that's what, our, what we're really expecting right now. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, uh, you know, hopefully we get to catch up next year and you, you tell me some more success stories and uh, tell me how great the business is going down there. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's the plan. But no, listen, I, I appreciate your time because, again, when we met down in Mexico, you struck me as somebody who was well connected and understood the markets well down there. I think uh, I appreciate your time today to share some of your thoughts and insights on what's happening and what Micronic is doing in the market down there. So um, so I thank you for that. And uh, like I said, hopefully in 2023, maybe we can get caught up again and uh, see how it's progressing. Thank you, Eric. Of course, we can see next year. Very good. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.